Hi, my name is Bob Gersh with East Coast Capital. And today I'd like to speak to you for a few minutes regarding sourcing your funds to do a mortgage. What does that mean? Well, in practical terms, what is required is a copy of your complete bank statement for the last at least two months. So we need two full months worth of bank statements, all pages, even if it's blank or as an ad on the back of a piece of paper, we need all pages and nothing blanked out. So we have all your transactions. Doing that allows us to be able to see the funds that you have available. So if you have to uh, potentially bring funds to closing for either a down payment or to pay closing costs or for other items, we see you have the funds. So the first thing you need is that full statement for two months. Now you may have more than one bank account and uh, depending on if we are using any of the information uh, such as if there is one bank account and your social security uh, check monthly goes into it, we certainly need that bank statement. If other income is going into an account or if that account part of the funds will be used towards uh, payment at closing. So we start off with those two months. So uh, you need to make a copy or have available those two months. We look at that. And we then look at the actual statement. Are there any large deposits? Is there adequate funds in the account? And the account going back at least two months, are there adequate funds to be able to fund the closing? So on that statement, we're seeing a couple of things. One, there may be a flow of money coming from other sources that goes into that account, in which case we would look at what those sources were and get documentation. Maybe it's a pay stub, maybe it's reimbursement from your employer or your business. Maybe it's from income from another account. Maybe it's just a transfer from one account to another, but we need the backup information again, two months worth of it. Uh, that backs up any money that is going into an account. Typically, if the amount in the deposit is $1,000 or more, then we're looking at its source. So as a quick example, if you have your money in a uh, investment account, and then that, that investment account money transferred out to your regular personal bank account, we would need all the documentation showing the flow of that money, sourcing the money as it's called. And then that sources back to that investment account and we would need to see two months of statements on that. Now, if in an investment account, all of a sudden a large deposit came into that account, you again need sourcing of that. So basically we wanna know ultimately for the last couple months, all the sources and as far as funds go, if those sources are funds that have not been in the account for at least two months, then those large deposits are tracked so we can see all the sources and have the whole picture. So what we're trying to do is not leave part of the picture out so that when you're handing over to us your bank statements, those two months, rather than waiting till it gets sent into a processor who reviews it and then sends it to an underwriter who says, please provide us more documentation to source that $5,000 deposit on the bank statement from a month ago. You'd already know and be prepared and have all the documentation and provide it to us to cover that. So that way there's no surprises and we have everything covered right up front. The other item besides funds to bring to the closing table are that if we're reviewing your income and all the sources of that income, we want to see the funds so that if you are getting a social security payment, then we would look at that 
annual statement you get, which shows how much you'll get monthly in Social Security. That plus showing the actual deposit on the bank statement cover that aspect. If there is funds coming in from other sources, investment funds, uh, IRA money moving, et cetera, the fact that it ultimately goes into your personal bank account and then is traced back through sourcing to its original sources, we can therefore have a way to verify what is your income on a monthly basis or and or on an annual basis. So all that can be found starting off with those two bank statements. Now, we would like, if you happen to be banking online, don't get a monthly statement, and a lot of people are in that position these days, you need to either online be able to access your statements and print them out, and a lot of times you can do that, and it should have your name, your address, your full account number of your bank statement. If for some reason, the particular bank does not provide all the details for security purposes, they may just have your name, maybe the la last digit or two of your account number, but not all the rest of the details on the statement. Uh, you should inquire to your bank to get a copy of that full statement. They should be able to provide that with, which includes the details of your name, your account number, uh, your address, et cetera, um, the dates that the statement is from. Uh, and if it is a statement that is only provided by the bank and it's not really looking like a true monthly statement that you get in the mail, you'd want to have the bank put its bank stamp and signed by a bank officer on the statement um, so that you could be able to uh, be able to apply documentation of the source of that statement. So that's what uh, I wanted to go over today. And uh, if there's any questions or if uh, you're ready to either refinance or to uh, get a pre-approval to purchase a, another property, um, be it your first property or your 10th property. Uh, we're here to work with you. And the best thing to do is start off with, after talking to uh, your realtor or any other advisors that you're working with regarding your finances, uh, feel free to call me, Bob Gersh, East Coast Capital at 352-561-3096. And again, that was 352-561-3096. Bob Gersh, East Coast Capital, being more than pleased to discuss any of these issues that were on this uh, uh, particular uh, episode today, and uh, ready to work with you and hope to see you at the closing table. Thank you, and have a great day.